it's talking about Michael Gleason's. Uh, as you, if you can hear it now, that's what's playing now. I can't go track by track with this, but there is one track that does stand out on this. Um, and I think, too, if we think of Rick Wakeman, who does his solo stuff, because you really don't buy a Rick Wakeman album <laughs> because you're going to have some great vocals in there except for reading, you know. And there might be a guy in there going like, And then the Frodo throw through the ring in the fiery furnace, I mean, into the fiery volcano. And then Carrie Le and then uh, Rick Wakeman wakes up and goes, <laughs> You know, you might hear something like that on Rick Wakeman now. Yeah, but Michael Gleason, I think, I think in the spirit of progressive music does this. Mm -hmm. And this is very good stuff, uh, you know, it's just, but the one track that stands out is At the Door of Wittenberg's Cathedral. It's a very long track, but it's uh, basically in Martin Luther and the 19th Thesis. And I was really surprised that it was on here because, uh, you know, people who don't know the history of that, because Christian music has always been Jesus music and all this, the, you know, they kind of forget the saints and that kind of thing. But this one, it's a thing to that. That's the reason why you look at some of these lyrics that Michael uh, Gleason has on these albums are not like your typical Jesus music at the time. And that's the reason why you start wondering about these guys if, um, Gleason had a little, I don't know, the, the, theologian training or something in there. Because his stuff is not what I'm used to that was popular in the Christian music scene, you know. But uh, the only really track stands out to me is At the Door of Wittenberg's Cathedral. Is it a good album? If you want albums with no lyrics and you just like music, yes, it's a good album. Pick it up, buy it, listen to it, enjoy it, you know. Uh, I myself like music with uh, lyrics and that kind of thing, but it, it, it there's nothing wrong with it. But like I said, the only track really s sticks out to me is at the door with. <laughs> and there you have it. There's that three. What do you want to say about that? Uh, okay. <laughs> I got a little story about this. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, uh, at some point, I had purchased a copy of uh, Metropolis, uh, the uh, 1920 odd, something, um, old, old uh, silent film. Um, and uh, the one copy I had had absolutely no sound at all. You'll buy them sometimes and they'll put them. Put a musical track in the background of it because they were silent movies. They didn't have a track. They didn't have any music. They didn't have anything. I've, I've heard, I've gotten copies of movies. They've gone to the point of making sound effects in it. And yeah. it's, it's really a wonderful thing. But living in the age when sound is a big deal for us, uh, it's kind of hard to sit there and watch a movie. So, uh, <laughs> Uh, being there's a lot of industry scenes in Metropolis. Now I'm not saying I'm not saying this is the same thing as Dark Side of the Moon and Wizard of Oz, but I am saying uh, that the door of the Wittenberg, Witt, Wittenberg Cathedral worked very well with the industry scenes of Metropolis, uh, which just it really helped me watch the film and uh, got me through the first. Uh, viewing of it and after that I became a fan of, of the uh, of the movie uh, because I, I really understood what was being said uh, to the point not not that it's I mean it's it, it actually I mean to watch the movie I, I, I as a Christian I, I would suggest to watch it because there's a lot of biblical Im imagery in it. so to put a Christian instrumental music with that, I don't think would have been far off because if you look, there's the whole scene of the uh, woman of Babylon uh, that's in there 
were riding on the beast. That's in that movie. Uh, this movie has to do with uh, uh, degrading uh, workers to the point of almost robots.